Hi, and welcome back to Neural Splendor. Tonight we're going to continue with our series on troubleshooting fault code 559, low fuel pressure in the Cummins ISX 2250 common rail engine. And tonight we're going to take a quick look at the service tools that you need to do the troubleshooting. And this should be a short video. I'm going to show you the tools just the necessary ones that you have to have to do all the troubleshooting and give you their part numbers. I'm also going to show you where you use those tools on the engine. And then next time we get together, we're going to go over actually doing the tests and what kind of flows or pressures you should have. And then how to identify what your problem is. The first tool we're going to look at is part number 3164618. It is an M12 by 1.5 and that is a fitting that screws into the ports one, two, or three above. Uh, you remove the banjo fitting that is in those ports that hold those lines on and you would screw this tool in. Notice the tool is not drilled through. So the only pressure or flow you're measuring is what is in the banjo line, not the manifold that it bolts to. And by the way, this manifold is the common fuel return manifold. So you've got number one, which is pump head return, number two is injector return, and number three is your common rail dump valve return. This tool is a 5299319. And by the way, these part numbers can change. Cummins always supersedes numbers when they make changes to anything. So they're able to go backwards. So if you give them this number and it's an old number, they can uh, supersede it and still give you the right part. This fitting, if you notice, kind of looks like the other one we used in the fuel return manifold, except it's drilled straight through and there's no side ports because we don't want to measure any of the fuel that's in a steel line here. We just want to measure leakage coming out of the common rail high pressure emergency overpressure dump valve. And that is almost nothing. The flow is very, very low. So we measure right at this port with a hose in a container. Here we're looking at the side of the engine. We're looking at the fuel filter, port number one. You would remove that plug and install a 3100221 quick check fitting. If you look up in the center of the picture, you'll see what a quick check fitting looks like. Uh, that is actually the fitting that is under number three when I pull that protective cover off. And the factory installs the fittings in two and three ports because you can do quick checks for plug fuel filters. Port 1 and Port 4 are for uh, more intense diagnostics. So the plug threads, the plug is an M14 by 1.5 by 16. That is the plug dimension. The copy check fitting that screws in there is also an M14 by 1.5. Uh, both the plug and those copy check fittings come with O-rings on them and that is what seals those ports. Remember there's 150 PSI in there when the engine's running. In port one, you would install a 30 pound gauge on that copy check fitting. You would not start the engine. And that's where you would check your electric lift pump pressure to see if it was functioning correctly. Port number four, you would install the copy check fitting. And then there is a tool, we'll look at it in another slide, that you clip on there. And that tool has a 43,000 surface in it. And it allows fuel pressurized fuel when the engine is running to dump into a bucket and it has a clear line and you look for air in the fuel and when you do other diagnostic tests that line simulates the work the engine fuel pump has to do under full throttle and full horsepower conditions. Here we're down looking at the engine. This part of the engine typically is in the frame rail or between the frame and the spraying axis. That's where you would access this. And fitting number two is the final suction fitting off of that gear pump. And it is pulling fuel all the way from the tank through the entire fuel system, the filter. 
so that it can send it to the pressurized filter. So port number two on the left is where total fuel restriction on the suction side could be measured. So we would put in universal banjo test fitting 4919057 and that has an eighth inch uh, tapped hole in it, pipe, and you could screw a 304 2618 quick check fitting in it. Probably have to put a, a 90 degree angle fitting in and then the quick check. And then you would, you would uh, hook up your 43 thousandths vent line up by the filter that dumps fuel into a bucket. And 43 thousandths orifice vent line that would be on the pressure side filter. And then we would rev the engine up to uh, whatever the maximum open throttle is, 1800 RPM or maybe 14, depending on uh, without VSS settings. And we would check our maximum fuel restriction. And that number can never be over 10 inches. Now, if you look at fitting number three on the far end, there is a check valve under there. If you take that line off and you screw number three out, the check valve screws out. You put a big hex uh, hex tool in it and you can back it out. Uh, from the side it looks like a stainless steel 12 gauge sh shotgun shell that's been cut short. And that check valve is there so that when the lift pump runs it pulls fuel from the tank and doesn't just spin it in a circle. Of course that check valve is not visible. You have to know that it's there. Uh, that's one of the things you check if the electric lift pump works but you're not building very good pressure with it. The yellow arrows in this are the fuel flow when the gear pump's moving it, and the purple arrows are the flow when the electric lift pump is moving it. So the electric lift pump would be when the engine's not running, and then the yellow arrows would be when the engine is running. The last thing we're going to look at is a tooling that's used on the common rail itself. On the left, you have the 5299721. This is a tool that simulates uh, injector load on the common rail. So there's a high pressure spring in there that's maintaining X amount of rail pressure in the rail. With this tool, you block all the ports off on the rail except for the dump and the port that feeds the rail from the pump and then one other port that this tool would screw on. And then the end of the tool that's away from my hand, a line screws on that, and that goes down into that beaker that measures your fuel flow. And we'll talk about uh, those amounts in the next video. On the right, you've got the 491 9546s. Those are the tools that when you take the fuel lines off, you screw that tool where the fuel line nut was. So up on number three there by the rail, that line to the left of it, you take the line off, you'd screw that heavy black tool steel cap on there, and that uh, goldish looking plunger with the point goes into the rail and simulates the end of the fuel line. Those are not hollow, they're solid. So you screw those on and you torque them to spec and they will seal the rail. And then the only fuel coming out of that rail is going to be out of that other tool, 5299721. You measure that and then you've got enough information to figure out what part of the fuel system is causing your 559 fault codes. This is your 43 thousandths Orphist vent line. It snaps onto the copy check fitting that we talked about that goes in the pressurized fuel filter head. And then the other end of it is open. It goes into a bucket. And it allows a metered amount of fuel to be dumped. Don't forget that filter housing's got about 185 PSI in it when the engine's running. So the fuel coming out of here to the fuel system simulates full power, full throttle, peak torque, fuel usage. So that makes the injection pump head work hard to maintain rail pressure. This is a very necessary part of your tooling. This is the beaker that you collect your fuel in. It's a 500 milliliter marked in 10 milliliter divisions. 
This is a plastic one. Don't buy glass. Yes, they stay cleaner, but they break when you drop them and it'll happen. So uh, we purchased this at a um, supply store. I think you can buy these at a hobby shop even if you look around or you can buy Cummins if you want. They all do the same job. Uh, this one's measured in milliliter on one side and ounces on the other. Cummins does give you ounce readings. I prefer the milliliter because uh, the ounces are just some get to be very small numbers and amounts. Last, we're going to talk about clean care. Clean care is simply keeping dirt out of the common rail fuel system. All the lines need to be capped that you take off. Any holes that are open need to be capped unless you got a test tool screwed into it. Remember, we're filtering the fuel at four microns. Google how big four microns is and you'll understand why these caps need to be on. If the guy in the bay next to you is buffing a gasket off of something and you don't have the fuel system capped, enough dirt can go into the fittings to take out an injector. It's critical that you cap all of your open ports when you open this fuel system. I cannot emphasize that enough. It's critical to keep that system clean.